Chronic kidney disease can occur in children from a number of causes, ranging from birth defects to infection. Dr. Carl Grushkin of Children's Hospital Los Angeles discusses the causes and available treatments for this disease. The commonest cause of kidney failure are from congenital anatomic abnormalities. So something that happens in utero in terms of the development where the kidneys don't develop normally, either microscopically or grossly or both. Uh, and that accounts for probably close to 60% of the kids who end up needing dialysis and a transplant. Nowadays, most kidney disease, at least the congenital kind, is discovered in utero because all pregnant women are ultrasounded. And so that if there's a structural abnormality uh, with the way the kidneys drain, or if there's a developmental abnormality where the kidneys are smaller than they should be, or have cysts where they shouldn't have cysts, things like that, it, those things will be discovered and then can be followed after the baby's born. There are a variety of things that the kidney is involved with and that happen to children who have chronic renal insufficiency at a very young age. Um, they won't grow normally because people with abnormal kidney function, they have a decreased responsiveness to all of the hormones that the body makes, growth hormone, insulin, things like that. So that even though they make enough growth hormone, they're, they don't respond as well. So that they, their linear growth is delayed. We do have now growth hormone that we can give them. And that's one of the two accepted indications for the use of growth hormone. The first is congenital growth hormone deficiency. The second is chronic renal insufficiency. And so that we can now take children who have chronic renal insufficiency, who aren't bad enough for dialysis or transplant yet, but whose growth is delayed, we can give them injections, we can get them right back on the growth curve so that they don't lose that time while their kidney disease is slowly getting worse or slowly progressing before they get a transplant. If you go back to when I started in the late 1960s, um, the success rate, long-term success with kidney transplant was well under 50%. If you look at it now, it's well over 90%. So there have been some dramatic changes that have occurred. They've occurred for a number of reasons. Uh, one is we're all more experienced, so we recognize issues and problems that we can avoid. The second is that the medications that are available to prevent the recipient from reacting against the kidney to prevent their immune system from reacting against the kidney are much better. The first transplant we ever did at Children's Hospital in February of 1967, father to son, the son is now 40 plus years old, and that individual is the longest surviving patient that I'm aware of uh, in the United States. I use that as an example when I talk to families where they were talking about whether a parent can or would like or would be able to be a donor. Uh, and I say, you know, the first one, they say, how long is it going to work? And I say, well, I can't promise it. I don't know for sure. But I can tell you that the first one we ever did 40 years ago is still working. And the immunosuppressive medications we have now are much better than they were then. So there's a good chance that it'll work long after I'm gone.